How is everyone doing on this fine and beautiful day? I hope you guys enjoyed the last wall of build I covered as I have another one you guys would most definitely want to use. With the power of Narcotic Grip and Sir 3.0, I've created a build that will allow you to escalate damage from activating your incinerated snap ability. From this, not only will you be able to stack on Scorched Damage to those caught by a melee, but you also apply additional Poison Dot damage which overwipes out everything it touches. It also spread like wildfire, which is also great in my opinion. Now if you fancy releasing a corrupt and flame that only gets worse the longer it lasts, then let me teach you the ways of necromancy, as many have before me. But before we delve in, do you know what else allows us to delve into the art of necromancy? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn your notifications as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, we will be using Dawnblade as it fits nicely into the build for playing aggressively with. On the other hand, Wallow Regent is also viable as we do lack quite a bit of healthy gen, which within the build will be really helpful in the long run. Now, similar to our cast lines build, this build here will focus primarily on damage and damage alone, and this is where we will be able to stack dot damage onto additional damage with absolute ease. There's a lot of power behind such a build and can be very useful in endgame to PvP environments, as long as you fully support it through and through. For this to be successful, I have the following for aspects and fragments. I have Touch of Flame that allows solar grenades to last longer and emit blobs of lava around the perimeter. You'll then want Heat Rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide and will grant you mini energy while in the air. For fragments, you want Ember of Ashes so you can apply more scorch to targets, Ember of Torches where power B hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant, Ember of Searing where scorch targets grant mini energy back, and Ember Benevolence where applying Restoration, Cure or Radiant to allies grant increased grenade, melee and class ability energy back for a short duration. For stats, you want 80 to 100 resilience, 70 recovering, 50 in discipline, and 80 to 100 in strength. As usual, focus your buff first into melee as the strength of the build lies there foremost. Once we get our strength near max style, you can then focus on resilience and then go from there. So, for key mods now, you want to have Bountiful Wealth for plus 2 mods created, Kindling Flame, where reviving a downed teammate will grant you a buzz of healing while charged with light, Melee Wellmaker for creating wealth via melee. Radiant Life for plus 20 in strength and additional adds, and Well of Life for an increased health regen over time. Now, the Cross Grip is just like Karstein's Armlets and Winter's Gill in terms of you can use them without the aid of needing them to be charged first. We can use this in a close quarter and trigger its effects, which will spread and decimate what it can, but at the same time, using an incinerated touch makes the melee a whole lot better in terms of inflicting as much damage as you can on a singular target. As you can see, a simple charge melee can destroy or weaken a ultra to mini boss if the dot damage continues to spread unimpeded. Now that's as straightforward as it gets, but once you add on the Ostia Strigger SMG to the mix, you become even more destructive to the point it becomes laughable. The following exotic is probably the best exotic SMG to date in terms of stacking on damage and watching it go crazy over time. Now, just like Nakota Grips, a fire in this weapon will build stacks of poison damage and then release a mist-like effect that can spread to others and cause additional damage. But that's not the good part. The great part of this is that if it spreads and kills those affected by it, it would start to overflow the mag and easily can get to 100 rounds alone. This also works when we use Nakota Grip as well, so while we are million getting kills from its effects, it will also affect our weapon in hand. This all in all will allow you to do some very long lasting damage for a simple primary and I highly recommend you use this for the following build and beyond if you want simple ease of use. For secondary we have Forbearance Grenade Launcher with Unrelenting Chain Reaction and this will be my backup weapon when I need to quickly heal or just wipe out an area if things get too packed. One downside to using the build is the lack of health based mods to keep the build going so that we don't die too quickly. You can use healing grenades and rifts to help you out, but if you just want to focus purely on damage alone, then you don't have a lot of options to pick. I then recommend you either get the Unrelenting Perk on another weapon, or try and get the Witch Queen Raid or Season of the Haunted Weapons, which all comes with additional perks that can heal you in terms of certain actions. For Heavy with the Palamaya B Rocket Launcher with Ambitious Assassin and Explosive Light, not much to cover here as we won't be using Heavy so much unless we need to. As I have Kinetic Siphon mods on to produce all the power, this will all go into enhancing our weapon's damage and then using it for big damage over time. Simple and doesn't take a lot of space up from there. For the stats, we want to invest into a little bit of everything so we can survive whatever is against us. 
I have said that both resilience and strength are the main focus of the build and that still rings true, as we will be up close at times and even when we don't have our charge melee active, we will need to push the build as far as we can go so we can make full use of the dot damage that we easily stack up. We will be using our weapons of course, but a lot of the synergy will be originating from our melee and melee alone. So for this area, aim for at least 70 to 100 so you can keep this area going even when you miss your shots. Elemental Wells will play a big part in the build, so we'll be using the Invigoration mod that I've gotten this energy back from collecting wells. This will be combined of course with Connect Siphon so we can keep this going as much as we like. Now do remember a lot of the support for keeping these abilities afloat will be coming from the fragments and aspects used, so make sure you match what I have if you want to get the same results as shown. Once that is up, you'll then want to invest into your resilience and recovery. As we have Well of Life available to support our recovering, you want to make sure both of these two stats are fully invested for longer survival. If you plan to go into endgame content above legend tier, then this is important if you want to survive and apply your build results well. You'll lastly then want to have your discipline as well, which can be left at 50, which is enough to support the build for a very long time. Instead of going with solar grenades, I recommend you use healing grenades instead, so you can last a bit longer while out on the field. Or the sticky grenade so you can prime targets to ignite once your melee gets going. It's very possible you can also increase this and add in Well of Ordnance instead of Well of Life so you can have a constant healing grenade on demand, but this will require you to mix a few things up if that sounds reasonable. At leftover wise, we have Rocket Launcher Scounder mod for extra reserve rockets, Revitalizing Blast while stunning champions will produce a miniature solar blast for extra damage and solar formation where your ignitions do increased damage in an increased radius. Now as we have this bit covered, here are the mods all compiled into the list for quicker viewing. For head we have my resilience, can excite from times 2 and battle world mod. Arm we have resilience and kindling flame mod. Chairs we have resilience, arm of the dying sun, progressive dampener and melee wall maker mod. Leg we have minor resilience, invigoration, rocket launcher scavenger and radiant light mod. Bond we have minor discipline, Solar Formation, Revitalize and Blast, and Well of Life mods. If you enjoy big stats of damage over time, or just like watching combatants have no chance of fighting back while the poison and serial dot damage takes its toll, then you'll enjoy this for a very long time. Ever since Austria was released, it's always been a top tier exotic that can make all content in game a breeze to play through. Combining it with Nocota Grip only makes using the two even more amazing at the job, and you'll be insane to sleep on such an amazing combo. When adding in subclasses and their effects to the mix, you can create some interesting and amazing combos which can trivialize content even more. For example, combining the loadout with stasis and its freezing effects will make doing GMs an easy gauntlet for everyone involved. At the same time, combining it with Void will allow you to debuff and suppress combatants at a long range and prevent combatants from ambushing you through sheer numbers. This rings true with Solar and its effects it can have against combatants. While the poison effect kicks in, it will also burn targets for a given time, which when done on a large scale, is all you will need to take out a singular ultra alone. You'll also become radiant and get damage boost for your weapons, and then you can heal yourself for a few seconds via well of life, and even more from there. It has great strengths, that rival casting, sunbraces and winter's gill. I can see it being even viable for massive content as it can shut down pretty much anything it lays its hands on. I had some great fun using this in the Corrupted Nightfall and Gambit and watching everything vaporize in seconds. But if you plan to use this in GMs then I would stop you there. It can do a lot of damage in a short time frame and can be great help for teams, but you'll need to swap some of your mods and weapons out to accompany your disadvantages in GMs. Remember, things are a bit more tougher to take down and your melee won't one shot miners unless they are already weak. Except from that, this build slaps and I think you should give it a try if you love warlocks in general and love to tamper around with hive based technology. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up date with destiny content if you did that type of stuff link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.